Welcome to Encore Live and our last webisode of 2023. I'm your host, Robin Bell, and on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the year ahead as we welcome guests who will share their knowledge on manufacturing and marketing to help guide your business in 2024. To get us started today, Robert Schoenberger, Editor-in-Chief of Industry Week, will share with us Industry Week's 2024 Manufacturing Outlook. He'll tell us about how inflation, interest rates, and employment will impact the economy and industrial landscape next year. Great. Thank you so much, and thank you for inviting me. As uh, Robin said, I'm Robert Schoenberger. Uh, I am Editor-in-Chief of Industry Week. I've been here for about two years now. I also direct uh, Smart Industry, and I'm the Editorial Director for Endeavor Business Media's Manufacturing Group, which includes brands like uh, EHS Today, Material Handling and Logistics, New Equipment Digest, and several others that you see listed here. Uh, I've been uh, writing about manufacturing for a little over 20 years now, mainly in the auto industry. I was the uh, beat reporter for the Cleveland Plain Dealer uh, writing about the auto industry for about seven years. I covered uh, uh, autos for the uh, Courier Journal in Cleveland before that, in, in Louisville before that. And I ran the uh, magazine Today's Motor Vehicles for about seven years. So I've been, been around automotive and heavy manufacturing for, for quite a long time and enjoy doing that at Industry Week. Uh, Industry Week has been around since, in one form or another, since 1882. We are now a, a digital publication, uh, still focused on the management and leadership of manufacturing operations. So uh, we're a great go-to source if you want to look for information about uh, Kaizen, continuous improvement, technology that can help uh, businesses become better at what they're doing. Uh, but we're so very, very focused on that manufacturing world. And our viewers are getting ready to experience some of what you offer. Uh, why don't we talk about Industry Week and how they recently produced the 2024 Manufacturing Outlook, right? Walk us through some of the insights on inflation. How do you see inflation impacting the manufacturing sector next year? Great. Yeah, we, we did, uh, conducted a webinar last month uh, where we collected some really great economists from across the spectrum to to go into what 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 is what are the ground rules where where are we right now and where are we heading, uh, and so one of the big issues is obviously inflation that has been the story of the past two years. We we just got new numbers out this morning. Looks like November was actually fairly good. Uh, we're up three point one percent year over year, which is higher than the Fed would like. They still want to stick to a two percent number, but much much better than some of those double digit increases that we were seeing uh, last year, especially. And so and here is the, the curve looking back to 2019. You know, we had very flat inflation. This is a consumer price index. This is uh, co collated by the uh, Federal Reserve. And if you look through that 2019 through really early 2021, you had a slight increase, but a fairly flat rate. And then that big jump in the middle you see there is what we were experiencing throughout 2022, this this. Uh, high single digit inflation rate that really drove cost up on just about everything, which led the Federal Reserve to its massive increases in interest rates uh, through the end of last year and well into this year. Uh, really, costs are high across the board on just about every product, but they do seem to have moderated a little bit. And there's some optimism that maybe things will calm down in 2024. Uh, it, it's very, very hard to gauge. Uh, people are re feeling very comfortable with where inflation rates are now, which actually could keep inflation high longer uh, because inflation usually doesn't stop until people start stop spending. And boy, the American consumer continues to spend their way through the, the current problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, why don't we talk about interest rate? This is another economic indicator. Yeah. How will interest rates impact manufacturing next year? So, and this is what I was just discussing, the, the, the interest rates were near zero or at zero, really for, for, for a very, very long time here. These are uh, statistics from the Federal Reserve Bank of uh, St. Louis. If you ever need uh, a lot of really good economic data, FRED, the database is a wonderful, wonderful resource. I highly recommend it. Uh, so we went from effectively 0% in, in interest rates uh, going into 2021 until you see that huge stair-step effect 
where we are now at the highest interest rates we've had in decades. Uh, that's where we are now. The, the, the consensus, the analysts believe that we're going to kind of stay where we are now through the rest of this year and start peeling back a little bit in 2024. Uh, you, that, that median number at 3.9% is much lower than we are right now at the 5.5%, 5.6%, uh, but still uh, much, much higher than we have experienced for the past you know, decade or so. Uh, 2025 is looking like the uh, the averages are starting to move down into a higher rate than zero, but a manageable number. When when the the, the prime rate is at that 2.9 percent, you're still dealing with an economy where people can afford to buy houses, uh, they can afford to buy cars. It doesn't add that much extra cost to the purchase. When you're at that five and a half, six six and a half percent rate, it gets a whole lot harder to justify big purchases. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this inspires a little bit of hope, if you will. Uh, so, Robert, in recent years, we've seen dramatic changes in the workforce, from the great resignation to technology advances to staff shortages. What are you seeing in workforce trends, and how are those trends impacting manufacturing? Yeah, I, workforce is going to be a huge challenge for manufacturers and every other industry for the foreseeable future. There are no fixes on the way to really solve this problem. Um, I really like looking at the civilian workforce participation rate. This is the number of people who are either working or actively seeking work. Uh, so we, we, if you remember, we had the during the Great Recession or the recovery from COVID-19 and those big shutdowns, there was that common refrain, people don't want to work. Um, and you know, so people were you know, taking whatever benefits they had and, and not reentering the workforce. There was some truth to that, but it really is not a complete picture. Um, if you uh, if we can advance just a little bit here, um, the, this time period that I've uh, circled it, it here, when, when there were a lot of stories going on about the great resignation, people quitting their jobs and going into new fields and the, the quits rate and the people, number of people voluntarily leaving their jobs every month was going up to this very large number. But if you look at this curve, it's not really that significant when it comes to the number of people entering the workforce and, and changing that number. And that's because we, what the, what the COVID uh, uh, declines in employment and then the recovery showed uh, really, we were we we missed something much bigger. And if we advance again, you'll see that this this great resignation was a much older, much larger problem. Uh, this is that labor participation rate going back all the way into the late '80s. If you see through the '80s through really into like 2005, 2006, we were still hanging out around that two thirds of the able-bodied population was either working or looking for work. The decline happened long before the, uh, the, the the Great Resignation, long before the COVID shutdowns. Uh, from somewhere around the the, the mid 2006 range until about 2014, 2015, we had about five percent of the workforce just decide to give up and, and not participate in work at all in this country. Uh, and then you know it, it was ticking up a little bit, starting to recover a little bit, maybe uh, when we headed into the COVID shutdowns. Uh, but so th this resignation did take place. There was a massive number of people who left the workforce, uh, but it didn't happen when we weren't paying attention. It happened when people barely noticed it. Uh, so what we're left with is a workforce that is smaller than it has been, uh, where we're kind of recovered back to where we were pre-pandemic. Uh, a little, we're, we're still a little bit below, but we're very much in that ballpark. And I think this is what we're going to be looking for for the, the foreseeable future. We just don't have you know, the, the number of people who can be working seem to be working or who, who want to be working seem to be working. So it's now just a, there's it's labor has become a scarce resource. Uh, we were just talking before the webinar started today. There's a 67 year old deli here in the Cleveland area one of the best in the world, just shut down, not because they don't have customers, they're always busy, it's because the owner who is quite, uh, getting up there in years can't handle the workload anymore and he can't hire anyone to replace it. This is, this is not a manufacturing issue, this is a uh, trucking issue, this is a banking issue. Every field, in every manu employer in the country is gonna have to find some strategies to 
find people to work that they may have not considered in the past or find ways of reducing the amount of uh, effort that goes into their products because the, 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 there's just not a pool of applicants that we can easily tap into uh, to bring into these jobs right now. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I think this is not the the Delhi example that you we talked about a little earlier. I don't think that's uh, that's unique. So you know, we talked about the pandemic that the workforce took a big hit, but you are questioning when the Great Resignation actually happened. Can you walk us through the insights and the data on that particular yeah. uh, issue? Well, yeah, as I was showing that earlier slide, that was really that uh, time frame starting around two thousand seven or so. Um, that's when things were going on. This is at a time when uh, you still had really strong participation from the baby boomers in the workforce. Uh, and you still have very strong uh, labor participation amongst the, the baby boomers. Really the people who were losing the jobs in the largest numbers at that point, and, and you were kind of that immediately after the great recession, uh, leading up to the great recession and after it, it was younger people. It was uh, a lot of the millennials who were really struggling to find meaningful work. Uh, some of them stayed in school longer than they could have uh, than they planned to. Others, you know, started going to nonprofits or just sitting out entirely. Uh, it, it was very, very much concentrated in those younger workers. Uh, it's gotten a little bit better. There have been some improvements, um, but. It, it's, you know, now we're facing the time that if we are successfully, we're seeing a lot of companies successfully bringing those people into the workforce, but that's just kind of treading water because they're coming in replacing a lot of those boomers who are going, already starting to retire and are going to retire in increasing numbers every year for the, the next several. So yeah, as good of a job as we can do getting these young people into the workforce, uh, it's just going to be a matter of keeping even with where we are right now. Yeah, we're we're facing some real challenges with with this. Uh, so you know, we've talked about the workforce participation rate then and now. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but you did. But what can you share with our viewers about the impact of the labor market for twenty twenty four? It's going to be interesting. Um, there, it has softened a little bit. There was a really nice article in the Wall Street Journal a couple of days ago about um, some, some smaller businesses are finding more success than they had been recently in hiring people. Um, some of the uh, some some of the operations that have really been grabbing huge numbers of workers looks like they may may have overhired and are starting to let some of those people go. I think like the Amazon warehouses. Uh, about a year or so ago, there were a lot of complaints that uh, people paying minimum, you know, m lower wages could not compete with the benefits and the salaries being offered by Amazon. Uh, Amazon slowed down, uh, which is good for the, the rest of the economy. Uh, so there are some bright spots that things are easing a little bit. We're not getting the, uh, a term that I had not heard many times until last year was labor hoarding companies that were seeing weakness in orders and might have traditionally considered a layoff or you know, maybe attrition to lower their workforce, not doing so, just making sure they held on to every single able-bodied person they could because when could you rehire them? Uh, that seems to be easing a little bit. Uh, we're still not seeing any large layoffs. Uh, unemployment is still at record lows. Uh, we just got a report about that uh, last week. Uh, there, There is no sign that uh, hiring has uh, become much easier uh, overall across the economy, but some, some sectors are doing a better job of it uh, uh, through wage increases, through better benefits. It's it, it, Hiring people is going to be more expensive. So you, I, I think if, if I were really want to hold up a crystal ball for 2024, one thing I'd expect to see is a lot of creativity on how people can take labor out of the equation as much as they can, either through technology or better management practices, uh, better uh, demand predictions, things like that. There's gonna be a lot of demand out there for services and systems that can just make sure you can get what you're doing, doing now, getting it done with one or two fewer people, is finding those people is just gonna be very, very difficult. Yeah, I'd say automation is gonna play a big part in this too. Uh, so Robert, I'm an optimist. I want to focus on hope. What do you mean when you talk about hope is coming? Well, I, I mentioned these young people, and uh, there, there's a reason why we're looking at Minecraft here. Yeah, about five or six years ago, I was in a meeting with an engineer at Ford, and she mentioned 
uh, we were at uh, Case Western University here in Cleveland, and she mentioned that she, the, the kids that she was talking to then were interesting, but she was really waiting for the next group, the, the, the ones who grew up uh, sometime in the uh, early 2000s. And I, when I said, well, what, what, what's about, what about them so special? And she just said, because they grew up on Minecraft. Okay, fine. I played with Legos. What's, what's different about Minecraft? Said, no, you don't. These are kids who are living in a digital three-dimensional environment that they build themselves, often collaborating with people all across the world. So you, you have some of these Minecraft worlds designed with uh, kids in Korea and G Germany and South America and in you know, Austin, Texas, all collaborating for fun. And this is something we can't teach PhD level engineers how to uh, efficiently collaborate in 3D environments. And that is where you know, so much of the design is going. So if we can find ways of really understanding how to tap into that, the capabilities of some of these young people just entering the workforce are gonna be incredible. It's a, it's a very creative group. It's a group that's just absolutely digitally native has all sorts of ways of really creatively looking at problems, uh, very few preconceived notions. There are cultural challenges and they're not gonna be easy to solve. Uh, there are different expectations, uh, different expectations on how much time they're going to spend on work and how they do it. Uh, but the companies that can really get some insight and understanding how those young people work and want to work are gonna have a, a really capable bunch on their hands once they, they get their feet wet and. Yeah, learn a little more about the working world. Mm -hmm. We could talk about this for hours. It's been really interesting. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. This information and your knowledge on the subject has been incredibly valuable. Thanks for this. Um, be sure to visit and subscribe to Industry Week for more of Robert's coverage of the manufacturing industry at industryweek.com. It's right there on the screen. That's it for this episode of Encore Live. Thank you for spending time with us today. We look forward to seeing all of you next year. From all of us at Encore Live, have a wonderful holiday season and a very happy new year.